Hey guys, it's Justin here from Cinema 4D Tuts, and I just figured that I'd bring you a uh, quick tutorial here. It's a uh, Saturday right now, so I just figured I'd bring a tutorial. I have nothing to do today, except a little bit of homework, of course. But um, so I just figured I'd bring you guys a uh, tutorial on um, how to render a video in Cinema 4D, or this is at least my render settings. This is what I use for every video I render. Um, I change it up a little bit for JPEG images, for like backgrounds and shit like that, and. Uh, I hope all of you guys know if you click this button right here that's just to show you like a, a preview of what like a uh, frame that like what that frame is going to look like um pretty basic right there that's just to show you what like what you do will look like or whatever you make will look like you know so um all right so and if you click this button the middle one in between the two uh the two render buttons uh that's like to uh start your final render that'll start the you know just the render all right so <clears throat> Alright, let's go to uh, output. For general, you just keep everything the same. Just do a full render. Um, and for output, um, you change this to, or you change the width to 1280 by 720 for the height. Um, that's just a, uh, that's just like the basic uh, width and height for uh, videos. Um, you keep pixels the same. Um, for mine, I changed the resol or not the resolution. I changed the film aspect to HDTV 16 by 9. I think it might automatically change when you change that to 1280 by 720. Um, and the render settings that you start out with, it basically just they're pretty bad. Um, so you definitely need to change them when you first start rendering videos and such. Um, so then after that, um, you change the frame range to all frames. That makes it so. Um, like whatever, like whatever, how m however many frames you have for that uh, video or intro or whatever you're rendering, it'll render every single frame, so it's a full render. Oh, okay. uh, <clears throat> Alright, and then in a save, you go to the save tab after that. Um, I change the file. I usually just save it to desktop, and then you type something in the file name. Um, that just saves it to your desktop, so it's easy to find, you know. And then you change the format, or I change the format to AVI Movie. It's usually a really big file, um, like intros are like 500 megabytes and shit like that. But usually I just open it up in Sony Vegas and do a another render. I don't lose any quality doing this. I think it's I think it works fine. So I change it to AVI Movie and render it out with uh, AVI or as an AVI file. And then multipass and uh, anti-aliasing. I don't change every. I don't change anything. Everything's fine the way it is. And then in options, this is to save you a lot of time on rendering. I change the ray depth to six. Oh, not sixty-six. Uh, I change the ray depth to six. I change the reflection depth to two, and then the shadow depth to six as well. That basically just gives you half of everything that it already was. I don't lose any quality doing this. I don't think I, it's not a noticeable difference. And renders are a lot faster. Um, so then after that, after you change all your settings, I would save it. I already have a preset saved, AVI. Um, so you can basically just save the preset as whatever you want. And then you just, whenever you go to render something, you just load preset, load AVI, and everything is perfectly the way it is. And that's what I do. It saves me a lot of time. It's good render settings. And then, you know, you just render it out. So, uh... I hope that helped guys, that was just a pretty quick tutorial. I think the next tutorial will be on how to use materials, how to uh, how to use advanced materials. And uh, let me know what you think in the comments and make suggestions. Uh, make sure to comment, like, subscribe to my new channel. Um, I know it's only been made for like four days, but thanks to everyone who subscribed and who's watching this video. And peace.